Hi, I'm Howard Jacobson, contributing author to Whole, Rethinking the Science of Nutrition. And today I'd like to talk to you about a really interesting study that I'm titling, When Vegans Eat Steak. So we've heard for years that the problem with eating meat is the cholesterol and the fat that's contained in it. So it would stand to reason if that's the problem, then we can solve it by eating lean cuts of meat. However, this study shows that it's not that simple. And the reason is this new chemical, TMAO, new to us, trimethylamine N-oxide, can encourage the growth of fatty deposits on the walls of arteries. Now here's where it gets interesting. The study compared meat eaters and vegetarians and vegans in whether the TMAO spiked after eating meat. And it found that a vegan did not show the same spike in levels of TMAO after eating a 200 gram sirloin steak. In other words, what they ate was less important than how they had been eating in the past. And the analysis showed that the vegans and vegetarians had, quote, very different types of bacteria in their guts. So Dr. Hazen, the chief researcher on this study, concluded that eating meat regularly promotes the growth of intestinal bacteria that turn carnitine in red meat into TMAO. And the thing about TMAO is that it leads to deposits on arterial walls. So carnitine on its own didn't seem to cause the problem, but when combined with TMAO, it turned people into, quote, prime targets for heart disease. The first point is that nutrition is complex. It is jaw-droppingly complex. And we're used to thinking about nutrition the way we might have learned it in school, like vitamin A is for eyesight, eat your carrots so you can see well, and that everything we eat is reducible to a specific bunch of nutrients, and each nutrient does a thing in our bodies. Vitamin C fights colds, vitamin E is for the immune system, vitamin A is for eyesight, that we think that way. And it really isn't the case, because here we see it's not just about the consumption, what we're consuming, it's about how we're absorbing it and how we're processing it. And that makes things way more complex. Important point number two, follow the money. So we're gonna see a very predictable research agenda from this study. Can you guess what it is? Is it about how to help people transition to a plant-based diet away from so much meat? Nah. Gina Collada writes in the New York Times that the researchers say the work could lead to new treatments for heart disease, perhaps even an antibiotic to specifically wipe out the bacterial culprit. In other words, we can still eat carnitine, we can still have our red meat, but if we change the bacteria, if we kill that one little bacteria in our gut that happens to turn into TMAO, then we can cure heart disease. Antibiotic, really? Has anybody heard of drug resistance? And do we really want some more drug resistant intestinal bacteria? Yeah, that's just what we need. If only there were another way that didn't have such a horrifying downside. Oh wait, there is, eat better. But of course, where's the profit in that? Where's the excitement and the research agenda of looking for that one bacterium in our gut that's the guilty thing that's causing the change from carnitine to TMAO that leads to atherosclerosis. Important point number three, the low carbers are going to spin this because they don't like where it's going. So they're gonna to try to figure out ways to show us that this study doesn't mean what it means. So Chris Kressler writes that it's not yet time to switch over to soy burgers because he writes, the mistaken blame of saturated fat and cholesterol as drivers of heart disease led to a decades long campaign to encourage low fat diets. And so we were deprived of nourishing and delicious foods like meat, butter, and eggs. That whole low fat didn't work, caused obesity, heart disease, and diabetes is a straw man because there was no shift to a low fat diet in the United States. Second, why is it a mistake to blame saturated fat and cholesterol as drivers of heart disease? What causes what? So one theory, cholesterol and saturated fat lead to heart disease. That was 
the result of the Framingham Heart Study and Ansel Keys' work, and pretty much every reputable study has found a, a link between cholesterol, saturated fat, and heart disease. Another possibility is it's the TMAO that leads to heart disease and the cholesterol and saturated fat were just implicated. They were just along for the ride and then and we kind of got it wrong and so we should be welcoming those back into our diet. Another possibility is it's the carnitine that causes heart disease and we saw here that carnitine doesn't seem to directly lead to heart disease but it needs to be converted to TMAO by those nasty little intestinal bacteria that meat eaters have and vegans don't seem to. Or it's cholesterol and saturated fat may lead to an intestinal environment that grows bacteria that convert carnitine to TMAO. Okay, just stop already. We'll never find the cause because there's no such thing as the cause in nature. This is so complex. Getting back to point number one, this is so complex. It's a system and you can't change a complex system by fiddling with tiny little reductionist parts of it. We're never going to fix this with antibiotics. We're never going to fix this with some drug that's going to block the conversion of carnitine to TMAO. You only fix problems like this by changing the system at its fundamental level. I'm Howard Jacobson, contributing author to Whole, Rethinking the Science of Nutrition, available wherever books are sold and available for pre-order at the web address listed on this page. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, my friends.